this is getting a bit out of hand. Every single time I open social media, there is yet another gender war going on with females accusing males of being superficial, males accusing females of being hypocrites and pandering to double standards. And I don't know if it's just my feed or if it's a broader phenomenon, but I feel like everyone is just talking past each other. Instead of being more empathetic and understanding to the needs of the other gender, we end up just criticizing them to no avail and we wonder why. I think this is something that we really need to be more cognizant about, not the fact that we're having these conversations, but in how we are going about having these conversations, especially on social media. I don't think there is any sense of how counterproductive these conversations are. And I think the solution really comes down to focusing on ourselves, realizing that for every superficial quality that we want to accuse the other gender of, there are so many superficial preferences that we have ourselves. This is something that I think we often forget when we are feeling resentful about what the other gender wants and something that we should always try to keep in mind. Absolutely, the cycle of criticism and defensiveness is exhausting and rarely leads to any real understanding. Um, it's like people forget that they're talking to other humans with their own set of experiences and perspectives. One thing that might help is promoting more self-awareness and self-reflection. Like you said, recognizing our own superficial preferences can make us more empathetic to others. Um, if we all took a step back and thought about our own biases and how they play into these discussions, maybe we could have more constructive conversations. Social media, with its quick, soundbite-driven nature, isn't exactly the best place for deep, empathetic dialogue. But if we can bring more of that self-awareness into our posts and interactions, it might start to make a difference. Maybe even sharing personal stories and experiences instead of broad accusations could help humanize these issues more. How do you think we could encourage more of this kind of self-reflection and empathy in online spaces? I think the solution really comes down to taking responsibility, taking ownership over our own, what we can control, right? We always try to control what other people are doing, but by focusing that inwards and realizing that there is so much that is within our control, so much so that if we actually improved on those things, we would be far more successful in the dating arena. There's this great advice that I heard from Jordan Peterson. The quote was, instead of asking how other people that I'm dating can meet my needs, right? Instead of asking, how do I go about finding the right person for me? It, we should instead ask ourselves, how do I improve myself and present myself as the best possible person? And I think by shifting that focus, we are putting ourselves in a more productive mindset. We are allowing ourselves that uh, room for growth instead of just assuming that the way we are is perfect and the way that everyone else is, is insufficient and inadequate because they are not attracted to who we are. That's a powerful perspective. Taking ownership of what we can control and improving ourselves can indeed lead to better outcomes, both in dating and in other areas of life. Uh, it's like flipping the script from being reactive to proactive. Instead of constantly looking outward and blaming others for our dissatisfaction, we look inward and work on becoming the best versions of ourselves. Uh, and when we focus on self-improvement, we not only become more attractive to potential partners, but also build a stronger sense of self-worth and confidence. This can shift the entire dynamic from one of neediness and blame to one of abundance and self-assurance. Also, it ties into the broader idea that change starts with us. If more people adopted this mindset, it could gradually transform how we interact on social media and in real life. Conversations might become less about criticizing others and more about sharing our journeys of self-improvement, which can be incredibly inspiring and constructive. You know, it's very easy to feel resentful about the preferences and ideals that the opposite gender has that we don't have and to project those insecurities. But once we realize that for every single trait that you might think is immutable, that cannot be changed because it's natural and you just have no say over it, there are a hundreds more that you can change. You can change how kind you are. You can change the quality of your communication. You can change how empathetic you are. You can always improve on how confident you are. And this 
takes more work than simply pointing fingers at other people and blaming them for things that are beyond their control. Absolutely. It's easy to fall into that trap of resentment and blame, but shifting focus to what we can control is incredibly empowering. The things we can change, our health, our habits, our skills, our mindset, can make a huge difference, not just in how others perceive us, but in how we feel about ourselves. Um, it's like building a solid foundation. When you work on becoming the best version of yourself, you start to attract people who appreciate those qualities. Plus, you become more resilient and less likely to be shaken by external opinions or societal expectations. Also, there's something liberating about taking ownership of your journey. Instead of being at the mercy of what others think or want, you create your own path. And as you mentioned, this goes both ways. Women can also focus on traits they can control, like kindness, empathy, and confidence, rather than getting caught up in things they can't change. By promoting this mindset, we can encourage more productive and positive discussions, both online and offline. It's not about denying the challenges or preferences we face, but about empowering ourselves to make the best of what we can control. Uh, have you thought about sharing this perspective more widely, maybe in your videos? It could inspire others to adopt a more proactive and positive approach in their lives too. We are actually making a video right now, and that is, uh, that's what the topic is on. So it's, yeah, it's, it's exactly what I'm doing. But I think that is such a great point you make that it is something that I, I'm not trying to discount how challenging it is. I'm not trying to discount the fact that some people seem to have won the genetic lottery and we ourselves might not have won it in one way or another. But we always need to realize that in spite of how difficult that is, in spite of how insecure it might feel, and those are all natural feelings, resentment is not the solution. It's only going to worsen the problem. It's going to make us feel worse about what is an already unfair situation. And it's going to make other people we interact with feel even worse about who we are. We're going to have even worse relationships as a result of it. The only solution is to try to set those feelings aside and work on ourselves, work on what we actually can control. And again, those things are far more plentiful than we might think at first glance. That's fantastic. Um, it's a really important message and one that can resonate with, with a lot of people. Acknowledging the natural feelings of insecurity and frustration without letting them dominate our actions is key. Uh, by focusing on what we can control, we not only improve our own lives, but also create more positive interactions with others. It's great that you're not discounting the challenges, but also highlighting the abundance of things within our control. This balanced perspective can really help viewers feel empowered rather than defeated. Whenever I feel the need to criticize someone on these you know, gender war top conversations, I can't help but just think that there are so many things that I am superficial about because usually that's what it comes down to. We're always accusing each other of being superficial. It just happens that what male uh, what male form of being superficial is is different from female. So then we start accusing each other of double standards and we always conveniently forget our own side of those deficits. And it's also worth pointing out that a lot of these superficial preferences are not as superficial as they seem. These are things that have been evolutionarily developed and passed on from generation to generation because maybe not in our current environment, but once upon a time, they were, they were um, biological imperatives. They were important if we wanted to keep alive and to prosper as a species, right? If women did not have that preference for security and status and someone who's going to be able to take care of them, they were at the mercy of, you know, they were putting themselves and their kids at risk and at the mercy of the world and everything that the world has to throw at them, which is a pretty harsh reality for a lot of women, even in the modern age, who have to take care of kids by themselves. And I know that's going to spark its own conversation about why men are not involved in that. And, you know, that could start its own gender wars. But the point is that all of these preferences, these superficial preferences that we have, men have our preferences because certain things signify fertility in women. And back in the day, without those things, the possibility of childbirth were not as 
uh, were not as likely. So even though a lot of these things might be obsolete now, we still have these biological instincts that we are not able to get rid of. We can try to moderate them to one degree or another, but we should be more empathetic to everybody around us, to the opposite sex about what it is that they are attracted to. And again, we should try to take ownership over our own, the things that we can control ourselves. That's a really insightful approach. By recognizing our own biases and superficial preferences, we can foster greater empathy and understanding. It's true that many of these preferences are rooted in evolutionary biology. And while they might seem outdated in modern society, they still influence our behavior and perceptions. Encouraging people to pause and reflect before responding in these discussions can help shift the conversation from criticism to self-awareness. When we acknowledge that we all have superficial tendencies, it becomes easier to understand and perhaps even appreciate where the other gender is coming from. Addressing these issues with empathy rather than judgment can lead to more productive and respectful interactions. Um, it's about building bridges rather than walls and focusing on what we can control in ourselves not only improves our own lives, but can also set a positive example for others. Incorporating these points into your video will likely resonate with many viewers and promote a healthier, more empathetic dialogue.